In the previous ATEM mini tip, I showed you how to create a macro that allowed you to switch camera angles and also load up a different lower third over each camera angle. However, the problem with that process of creating the macros by recording them over and over and over again is that they're quite prone to error. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the first recording that we did in the previous video and then replicate that out for cameras two, three, and four using XML editing. Here are the two macros that we created in the previous video, camera one plus lower third and camera two plus lower third. Just to test them out again, we'll go to run and load up camera one plus LT and camera two plus LT, and they're working fine. But I wanna go ahead and create them for three and four. And in fact, I'm also gonna create the one for camera two all over again. I'm just gonna go back into the create tab, select camera two and delete it. So we only have the first one created. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out as an XML file. Go to file, save as, Give it any name you like, I'll just call it camera switching, hit save. And here in this window, I can choose what I want saved into the XML file. In this case, I don't want all of this, I only want the macros. So I'm gonna click on select none and then select macros and save that. It'll just make it easier to manipulate the file later. Next, I'll switch over to BB Edit, which I like to use to edit these files. I'm gonna go ahead and open the file that we just created. And from here, we can see exactly what this macro is made of. There's the macro, index zero, that's the first macro in the list. There's the name we gave it, camera one plus LT for lower thirds. And then here's all the different commands. Program input was set to camera one. The key fill was set to media player one, and there's the key source for it as well. We disabled the mask, so you can see the mask is set to false. We enabled the pre-multiply, so there's pre-multiply set to true. And then we chose the media player source, which was that first graphic, which is showing up as index zero. Now this can definitely get a little bit confusing because the index number is not the same as the number in the software for that particular graphic. Let me show you what I mean. This is set to index zero. However, if we look at the media player, it was actually graphic number one. This is position zero. This is position one, position two, position three, and so on. This applies to the macros as well. You'll notice that our macro is set as index zero, but it's actually in position one. So again, it's confusing, but whenever you're dealing with these, you have to know that you are loading up a different number than the one that you need. All right, let's go back into the BB edit. And here we can see the downstream key on error was actually disabled and then enabled. Curiously, it actually recorded that turning it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that line because we don't want it. We don't want it to turn it off and back on. We just wanna leave it on. All right, now I wanna go ahead and duplicate this three more times. So we'll go ahead and select all of this from the opening of the macro to the closing of it. I'll hit Command C to copy that, put the cursor here, and then just go paste, paste, paste to give us three more of them. Now I need to change each one of these for each camera angle. There's a few things I have to do. So it's index zero, camera one. Let's change this one to index one, and we'll set that to camera two. This one will be index two, and we're gonna set that for camera three. And this one is index three, and set that to camera four. Next, let's look at the camera inputs. This one's set to camera one. This one is going to switch to camera two, to camera three, and to camera four. Finally, we need to change the graphic. The graphic is index zero. Here's the graphic right here. That's index zero. This one's gonna be set to index one, index two, and index three. And of course, if you're ever confused at which one you're switching to, simply check out in your software, the media player, it was number four that we wanted to load in position four, subtract one from that to get to the index number, and there we go, index three. That's it. This should be everything we need to do to save all four of these buttons as macros. I'm gonna go ahead and save this, but I'm gonna do a save as, and just a little tip on how I like to do this. Under the save as, there's always a date and time automatically added by the ATEM software. I'll go ahead and update that timestamp so that it reflects the current time. It is currently six minutes after the hour, so I'm gonna say six, and dash zero zero. The dash zero zero is for me replacing the seconds, but also an indicator to me that that is one that I created. It's just how I do things. We'll go ahead and save that. Go back over to the ATEM software and from the file menu, restore, and we'll choose the new one that I just created. Restore that. It asks what I want to restore. In this case, macros is the only thing available. Click restore, load up our macros. And there they are, camera one, two, three, and four with the appropriate lower third. All that's left is to test it out. Go to the run, make sure recall and run is enabled, and we'll switch to camera two, camera three, camera four, and back to camera one again. This is a great way to take total control over your macros. 
yes, it's a little bit complicated and it does take some getting used to, but once you get comfortable with manipulating the XML file, you'll find that you can go in and start copying, pasting individual lines of code from one macro into another, making it easy to combine complicated macros into one. You can also save off multiple macro files, open those up and copy and paste one macro command into another file, just making sure to always give each macro a unique index number. That's a common mistake. If you have multiple macros with the same index number, you're gonna be missing one inside of the macro list. So just open up that XML file and make sure that each one has a unique index number. Other than that, have some fun figuring this out. It's again, complicated, but it's worth the effort. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe so I know that you wanna see more of these videos. And if you have any questions that you want answered, any tips that you're trying to figure out, drop them into the comments below. I'll try to get to it.